So dear Doctor, Doctor Rowan Williams. And then we'll put our questions on. Oh, um. Who's got Sikhism? Sikhism. Hinduism. Hinduism. Yeah, we've got Judaism. Things Earthquakes, like volcanoes, tsunamis. And, and where does the he stop them? Hello, Dr. Williams. We're asking a question of, did evolution really happen or did God create man as Adam and Eve? We are asking these questions because there are, there are many theories um, surrounding how we started out. We're also asking, did Adam and Eve really exist? Also, how did Cain and Abel reproduce? I don't think the Bible's meant to tell us exactly what happened thousands of years ago. It's meant to tell us how we got, generally speaking, to where we are now. So, if you think, what are the problems we as human beings face? Well, one of them is how do we cope with temptations to do the wrong thing? What are the effects of our choices? Do our choices make life really difficult for ourselves and others? So here's a story about a man and a woman, right at the beginning of everything, faced with some difficult choices, and they make the wrong ones, and it has a terrible effect on absolutely everybody forever afterwards. That's what the story is meant to get home to us. And the question then is not so much, well, you know, would we find a little grave in the Middle East marked Adam and Eve, loving, loving husband and wife for so many years? I doubt whether we would. But we can say, right from the very beginning of human beings being human, we've had the same problems, the same temptations, and we make the same sort of mistakes. When we talk about evolution, I think we're talking about all the ways in which the world got to be the way it is physically. It's a wonderfully complicated, wonderfully rich world. We couldn't ever have imagined just how rich it was until we started looking. And that's wonderful. And for me, it doesn't in any way contradict what I believe as a Christian person. Because what I believe as a Christian is that everything that's around me, all those processes of evolution, all the mysterious, abundant life of the world, all of that's there simply because God wants it to be. In our community we have a lot of different beliefs. Sikhism, Hinduism, Muslim. All of these people believe in different gods, but how do we know which one's real and which one's myths? One of the biggest changes in my lifetime, I think, has been how much more aware we are of people who've got other faiths and other cultures from our own. And particularly where faiths are concerned, that can be a bit, a bit disturbing. You think, well, I believe what I believe, and they believe something completely different. Who's going to tell me who's right? Now, nobody is going to be able to tell you once and for all who's right. You can't go to some museum or library somewhere in, in the world and look up a book which will tell you, this is right and this is why. You have to discover something of that yourself. But I think it's very important to remember that we are looking for the truth, not just for what suits us or what we've inherited. We're looking for truth. And how we work out what's true and what's not so true depends a bit on what sort of risks we're prepared to take in exploring the ideas and the experiences. If you want to know if religion generally is true, well, why not just try praying or meditating and seeing what it feels like? And then, looking at the books, the customs, the teachings of different religious traditions, I think you can say, well, does that bit of it really cover all I understand by what human life is about? Does that really account for this or that problem? Does it hang together? And there may be no answer that will keep you absolutely secure and tell you once and for all this is it. But you've got some questions to ask. It's worth asking. It's worth exploring. And you don't just shrug your shoulders and say, well, we're all different, aren't we? Truth does matter here. Hi, Dr. Williams. We're writing you a letter because we want to know if God made the world and he loves everyone in it, why do we have natural disasters? Why doesn't he stop them? 
The question about why God allows natural disasters, or diseases for that matter, is, is one of the toughest that there is for anyone who has a religious belief, and I'm not going to pretend there's an easy answer to it. But I'd, I'd start thinking about it a bit like this. The world we're in has natural laws, regular patterns of things happening, and it's those regular patterns that actually help us live on Earth. It's because plants and seeds have certain natural laws that we're able to grow our food. It's because various chemical things have the properties they do that we can develop scientific advances, and so on. Those natural laws are, are good. They're part of what it is to be in the world we're in. But of course, if the world obeys its natural laws, and we somehow or other get in the way of a natural law unfolding, well, terrible things can happen. If I jump into a river, the natural law of my weight and the water will mean that I'll probably drown if I can't swim. And if I were to say, can't, can't we have a god who gets me out of the river every time I fall in? I don't think we're really taking the world seriously enough then. Natural laws, regular patterns, they're part of the world we're in, and they're a good part. We use those things so that we can make ourselves safer and, and happier. But there's a price to pay, and I don't think we can quite expect God just to suspend natural laws every time things might go wrong for us. It's tough. As I say, nothing makes that easier. But that's the beginning of thinking about it, I think. I'm Emma, Dr Williams. I'm Beth. Do you believe what the Bible says about the creation of the world? And do you think that the Bible is an accurate source of history? Thinking as well. If you ask why the Bible matters, or why I might trust the Bible or find it important, I think I'd start by answering that it shows you the kind of impact on people's lives of discovering, discovering God or being discovered by God. For example, in the Old Testament in the Bible, you have this tremendous story about how God leads his people out of slavery. His people are slaves in Egypt. God inspires somebody to take them somewhere else, to move right out of slavery, to become free. And the Bible tells us that was hard work. People didn't very much want to be free, some of them. And then they're gradually molded into being a proper community with laws and customs. And all of that says, well, when God really comes through to people, it's quite hard work, it's quite difficult, but it sets them free and it makes them relate to each other in a very new, very different way. Now, that's the kind of thing that matters to me most about the Bible. It's a story about the impact of God on human beings. Over a long period of time, if you look at the Bible, the, the stories extend from thousands of years before the birth of Jesus to about a hundred years or so after his birth. So it's a long period. You watch that impact of God gradually making a bigger and bigger difference until the biggest difference of all, for me as a Christian, is in the life and the death of Jesus.